Hey, and welcome to another Knowing Your Enemy guide. Today, we'll be discussing Fire Mages, which are currently widely seen in the 3v3 bracket, arguably being the best caster spec in the game. But before we get into things, if you're interested in gaining early access to our Knowing Your Enemy series as it's released on our site, along with plenty of other exclusive content, including arena commentaries direct from some of the world's best players that train you through their decision making in real time, head on over to skillcap.com and sign up today, link in the description below. Members also gain premium access, which gives you a direct line of communication with the Skillcap team to have your questions answered by pros. The scariest thing about Fire Mages, as we all know, is going to be Combustion. It's a Fire Mage's biggest offensive cooldown that deals an absurd amount of damage when it's popped. With increased critical strike damage returning in PvP, as well as the addition of Infernal Cascade, Combustion has become a much more powerful cooldown. If you're not quick to react or unable to deal with this cooldown, a good Fire Mage could take you down in seconds, if not milliseconds. Luckily, there are a few ways to deal with combustion, even though it can be difficult at times. Nine times out of 10, you'll want to trade a big defensive cooldown as soon as possible in order to survive its pressure. This is especially important when using damage reduction cooldowns, which will be the case for most classes dealing with a fire mage. For instance, here you can see in this matchup a warrior could gladly trade Die by the Sword for a Mage's Combustion. In the few seconds it took the warrior to use this defensive, he already dropped to 56% HP in that short of an amount of time. It should be enough if you can continue shutting down the mage, or if your teammates are free to help you out. If you don't react quickly enough, this could easily mean your demise, so make sure to use your defensive cooldown so you don't die like this. However, Fireball lowers the cooldown of Combustion thanks to Pyrokinesis. This makes it difficult to always have strong defensive cooldowns ready for it. So another excellent way at dealing with Combustion, which most classes can do, is using CC on the mage during it. Here, the enemy warrior did an excellent job of this, using Storm Bolt on the mage and fearing his trinket to deny high uptime of the Combustion. Crowd controlling an enemy mage like this can be better than using defensive cooldowns as you could hold defensives for times where you can't CC the mage. Due to pyrokinesis, you could also look to shut down more fireball casts to deny them from getting combustion back too quickly. This is extremely beneficial if the enemy fire mage team relies on combustion windows to win the game. Be careful though as doing this too much could leave you vulnerable to healers being sheeped. The last and potentially most effective way of dealing with combustion is simply having an offensive dispel for it. Even though you may need to use defensives regardless, purging it off will completely stop the mage from overwhelming you. Other aspects of a fire mage's burst damage comes in the form of meteor and phoenix flames. These are abilities that do big instant damage, which a mage will use to try and land kills, especially during offensive setups. Combined with combustion, this kind of damage is what allows a fire mage to have an incredible amount of damage, being able to pretty much solo kill anyone during this time. The main weakness of both these damaging effects is that they are both AoE, meaning you could stack with your partners, making it difficult for the fire mage to deal pressure. Say your healer is in a full sheep, standing on them will result in one of two things. The mage breaks the sheep with his meteor or phoenix flames, or the mage will be forced to use other spells, dealing far less damage. Mages have also gained access to the return of Alter Time in Shadowlands. Alter Time gives mages a great defensive ability, allowing them to use it at high health. 10 seconds later, the mage will return at the health and location in where it was used. The best counter to Alter Time is simply offensive dispels. Of course, this means not everyone can do it, but purging it off means the mage can't go back to their original location or health at all. For teams that do not have a purge, you can still do a couple of things during this time. Simply waiting out the duration before using burst cooldowns could be your best course of action, unless you're on a timer to take down the mage. When that happens, then your best course of action would be to stun the mage and try to nuke them down to force more defensive cooldowns. A mage cannot use alter time again to go back during a stun, making this cooldown virtually useless. Alright, moving on to a couple more important spells fire mages have utilized for a while are the ever important Shimmer and Dragon's Breath spells. Both of these are on a low cooldown, being powerful tools to help a fire mage land a sheep on enemy healers. This combination of these spells being used could make it difficult to stop this sheep from landing on your healer. One way to deal with it would be to try and interrupt the polymorph school before shimmer happens. Since both spells are on the same school, interrupting sheep will mean the mage can't use shimmer, denying the CC when it's used. Sometimes you may be unable to interrupt it if the mage plays well. In these cases, you could look to use ranged interrupts or crowd control to deny shimmer sheeps. 
In this example, a Windwalker uses his Paralysis to deny the follow-up sheep on his healer after Shimmer is used. This is great as the sheep was denied and a charge of Shimmer was wasted, allowing the melee cleave to have easier uptime on the mage. With Dragon's Breath, this becomes a bit trickier as it's an AoE CC, which could guarantee an easy sheep for the mage if players are stacked in it. You also want to be very careful with your positioning as a healer, since a good mage could time this well to land the CC without anyone being able to stop it due to line of sight. If the paladin was at this location instead, Morrow wouldn't be able to stand out of line of sight for his sheep, meaning the enemy warrior could look to stop the follow-up. Instead, the sheep lands and they swiftly land a kill on the mage without the need of combustion. The best way to deal with this is to keep track of DB and similar to Shimmer, you want to keep ranged interrupts or CC to deny the follow-up sheep during the DB. In this example, the warrior did a good job using his overwatch to deny the sheep on his paladin while he was in a dragon's breath. You probably won't be able to stop every single DB sheep combo, but it's important to stop it as often as possible. Another familiar spell fire mages have is their cauterize. Cauterize is a fire mage's safety net when dying, being a cheat death mechanic on a 5 minute CD. There is only really one big counter to this, which is that priests could try to time a mind games on the cauterize, which could kill the mage instantly. It's important to simply be aware that this spell is up and is handy when you're looking to kill a fire mage. Since it's on a 5 minute cooldown, the mage will most likely have only one, potentially two uses of it throughout an arena game. In that time, the mage could be extremely vulnerable, meaning that they could become your main kill target depending on the comp you play. Though Cauterize isn't their only biggest defensive cooldown, as they also have access to Ice Block. It's also on a 5 minute CD, so like Cauterize, it will most likely not be back up for the remainder of the game. Again, it will make them great kill targets once this defensive cooldown has been popped. Ice Block, of course, has limited counterplay to it, but warriors and priests could look to remove this with Shattering Throw or Mass Dispel. Doing this could potentially nullify the Ice Block, allowing you to kill a mage through this defensive. Moving on to Covenants, Fire Mages could potentially play different Covenants at the moment, which will be worth knowing so that you can deal with each of them accordingly. Night Fae is a popular choice at the moment, having excellent Soulbind Conduits. They also gain Shifting Power, being an excellent cooldown for a Fire Mage. Shifting Power reduces the cooldown of all the mage's abilities on cooldown. Every tick of this channel reduces it. You should try to interrupt it as early as possible, denying further ticks from happening. It's also worth noting that add-ons such as Omnibar won't be tracking the cooldown reduction of these spells. So, pay particular attention when this has gone off, as an unexpected counterspell could cost you the game. Venthyr Mages are common, being a better endgame covenant, as well as gaining access to Mirrors of Torment, being an excellent cooldown for Fire Mages. Mirrors of Torment can silence and root you for 4 seconds, being a big hindrance to any class. As such, you could look to dispel this as quickly as possible in order to deny its effect. It's also possible to use Grounding Totem or Spell Reflect against this ability. Careful not to use anything too big such as AMS or Diffuse Magic, as you want to save big defensive cooldowns for combustion in most scenarios. The last covenant a mage could use is Kyrian gaining Radiant Spark. Using this covenant in conjunction with other Fire Mage abilities can create an absurd amount of damage. This is due to mages running with Rune of Power as well when playing this covenant. Luckily, there are multiple ways of dealing with this, being able to interrupt it or, once again, using Spell Reflection and Grounding Totem in order to negate it. You can also look to dispel it as well, denying its effect, similar to Mirrors of Torment. Since a lot of casted abilities are needed for this, it's easy to predict that they will do a lot of damage at this point. Running out of LOS of the Rune of Power is good as it forces the mage to push in and lose its buff when wanting to get off more damage. You can also trade defensive CDs once again to make sure you survive this scripted pressure. Last but not least, Fire Mages have two legendaries that they could use in PvP, which are very different to each other. Triune Ward is the most widely used legendary as it's an incredibly powerful defensive one for every mage spec. It will simply absorb a ton of damage on a low cooldown, making it very difficult to kill Fire Mages with this legendary. Once again, a common main weakness against Fire Mages is the offensive dispels. Here, you can look to purge the barrier absorb effects, especially if you have two offensive dispellers in your team. This will mean the Fire Mage can still be a great target to kill, reducing this legendary power's effectiveness. If you have no access to purge, then you have two options. Depending on your comp, you could just look to power through this legendary effect if you have great passive pressure on the mage. If your comp really struggles killing a mage with this legendary, then you could look to be on another target, effectively making it useless. 
The other legendary a Fire Mage could use is Fevered Incantation, being a powerful offensive one, adding to the pressure you have, especially during combustion. This will make combustion setups from the enemy mage even more terrifying, being able to easily and rapidly take you down if you aren't quick to react. It's worth noting that you can quickly see if a mage is playing with this legendary or not due to the buff that they get from Fevered Incantation. So keep an eye out for this so you know which legendary the Fire Mage is on. To deal with this, you have to pop defensive cooldowns as soon as possible with the addition of more defensive cooldowns if needed. The big plus side of mages using this legendary is the fact that they will not have Triune Ward, meaning they will be far more squishy and most likely will be good kill targets for your team. Alright, that covers all the main features of a Fire Mage in Shadowlands Season 1. We hope you all enjoyed this guide and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.